Knowledge is power. Make an impact by learning more. Call us right now for more help at 866-945-8070. Accounting for e-commerce, use purchase orders in QuickBooks Online. This is incredibly important for e-commerce businesses because a lot of times we're ordering products and it may be a little while before we get those products. So we don't want to skew our inventory accounts by creating a bill right away because creating a bill right away is going to add that stuff into inventory and then it's going to skew our inventory accounts. And that can lead to angry customers because if a customer places an order and we think we have sufficient quantities to ship them right away, only to find out that we don't after the customer's already paid or what have you, customers get upset about those kind of things. Go figure. So we want to use purchase orders so we can record the fact that we've placed the order. And as you're going to see in the write-up, and I'm going to show you in the rest of this video, I've developed a process because I've been working closely with e-commerce businesses for a little over a year now, a little more than a year, actually close to two years now. And along the way, we've developed a process. So I use a product, you may have heard me talk about it before, it's called Bilby's. And I have the clients send every single bill, got to be sent into Bilby's. And it's easy, you get a dedicated email address, so any bill you get, you just forward it to that email or if necessary, scan it first and send it in. Bilby's will take that bill and if it's not been paid yet, it'll sync it over to QuickBooks Online. And then there's a whole process I have around how we track that. So that when the bill does show up in Bilby's, it actually will get synced over into an other Bilby's expense account. And then I have a process where I go through a report, a series of reports each week, one of which is the other Bilby's expenses to see what bills have come over from Bilby's. And now I can go into Bilby's, click over to check the link and see a copy of that bill because it's easy to access through Bilby's. And then on that bill, I can see the PO number. And the POs have been entered into QuickBooks Online because my clients have done that part as well. They did it when they placed the order. So it makes it very easy because a lot of times the amounts don't match up dollar for dollar. We end up with a shipping charge that wasn't on the original PO or some such thing that causes it to be different. So now I can look at the the, uh, digital image of the bill and that makes it easy for me to figure out which PO in QuickBooks gets matched up to that bill. And then it comes out of the other Bilby's expense and of course gets matched up with the right inventory components so that now we have added it to inventory which is appropriate because by the time we get the bill that means we've actually received the product. So this is why it's important to use purchase orders in QuickBooks Online because it makes the inventory tracking process much, much more accurate. So let's take a look and let me show you what this looks like. A purchase order form by itself isn't complicated to use in QuickBooks Online. This is really more about the process and how the form is used in a larger process, ultimately for making sure that inventory is tracked accurately. So how do we do that? First of all, let's take a look at a form. If I go under the Quick Create and I go to Purchase Order, which is under Vendors, of course, because purchase orders are issued to vendors, it's a simple form to fill out, right? I choose a vendor and I fill out the information that I want to fill out in the purchase order. And it's exactly like a bill, except that it doesn't post and it doesn't record the receipt of inventory into my inventory count or value, which is the key here, right? Because we don't want to skew our inventory. We don't want to falsely inflate what we think we have in stock and then make a promise to a customer that we can't actually keep because we don't actually have those quantities in stock. So what am I talking about in my bigger picture process? In the write-up I've mentioned, that I use and love a product called Bilby's. Bilby's is a place where my e-commerce clients forward all of their bills. And I'm able to log in and get a copy of that bill, you know, uh, brought up easily online. Now, the other thing is those bills, when they're sent into Bilby's, will automatically sync over to QuickBooks Online. So my client is entering the purchase order. Eventually, the bill comes and gets forwarded into Bilby's. And then Bilby syncs it over to QuickBooks. So eventually, all I have to do is include in my weekly reports something I call other Bilbies to clean because all the bills from Bilbies get posted to this expense account that Bilbies will create in your QuickBooks Online company and it's called other Bilbies and I organize it to group it by name. So now I can look, for example, at this particular bill and say, oh, this bill just came in. It was within the past week. Let me go see if I can match it up to a purchase order, which means I need to now go log into Bilbies. Love this product. Uh, We'll go log in. And if anything looks like it's blurred out on your screen, that's because it is. Okay, so the bill is from a company um, whose recent bills are going to show up most likely right here in the recent bills. Uh, 
It looks like we've gotten a whole bunch of new ones in today because I was looking this morning and it was right here at the top. So here I'm just going to type all for all American. Okay, and here's the bill from August 14th. And you can see it's for the same amount, right? 25, 4, 46, 60. So I can click this image here to get the link. Now what this will show me is it shows me the order number, 206167. So initially in QuickBooks, this bill, if I click through, is coded to Bill B's other as an expense. But along the right are my purchase orders. So what was that purchase order number again? 206167. There's 206167. Notice the amount is different in the purchase order. So we're going to deal with that. First, I'm going to add this PO to the bill, right? And it does. Now it adds in all the line items down below that were actually received on that bill, right? And sometimes you got to reorder these columns to be able to see things properly. Okay, now then all I have to do is eliminate this, but remember the amount still didn't total, and that's why we're looking at just about double the amount because I got to take a look at this bill now. And again, this is what I love about Bilbies. It just makes it so easy to do this on screen. We have a freight charge in the form of a negative amount. They're giving us money back for freight. Could be any number of reasons why. For now, the only thing I care about is that I have to put a negative 691 for the freight. 25441 now should match that bill's total. Uh, 25446 because it's 69140. Did I not do the right amount there? Uh, minus 69140. 254460. Uh, it should be 254460. So then we want to take a look and see what else is uh, different here. Right, and this one is 8504, should be 8510. So we're getting perhaps some rounding differences. So I'm just going to key in the exact amounts 5088, 3996, and 8544. So now we should have a perfect match 254460, 254460. Now, if I had only received part of the amounts, all I'd need to do is reduce one of these quantities, and the difference would be left back on the purchase order. The purchase order would remain open. Other than that, I can go home now. I'm done. Everything matches. Um, I fixed my one little problem here. I fixed my little freight. This, of course, needs to go to freight or cost of goods sold. There it is. And so now I can save and close and I'm done. And that's my process. And I just go through this report every single week to see which bills I need to enter or which bills I need to match up to purchase orders. And of course, if I can't find the purchase order, then I reach out to my client I use Slack, so I communicate with the client in Slack. We'll have a channel in Slack for purchase orders, and I can go in and say, hey, we've got a bill from so-and-so for this amount. I don't see a purchase order in it. Do I need to have you enter that purchase order? So on and so forth. Bottom line on this is this is an incredibly efficient process because most of the time it's just what you've now seen, which is no contact required with the client. Having to go back and forth with the client on things slows us down. This makes it incredibly efficient because like you just saw, I can log into Bilby's. I can access a copy of the bill. I can see which PO it goes with. I can match the bill to the PO right in QuickBooks Online, and I'm done, and I can move on. So it saves a ton of time when you use a process that's efficient like this. When you use purchase orders in QuickBooks Online for your e-commerce clients. That, my friends, is it on accounting for e-commerce using purchase orders in QuickBooks Online. As always, I hope you had some fun here, learned something along the way. I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day, and I look forward to seeing you on the web.